Hi everyone, it's Lynn here from biggerblade.com. Today I'm going to talk to you about how you can use mind mapping to plan and manage your meetings more effectively. I'm going to show you how a tool like MindMeister, which is a very good online mind mapping tool, can be used to help with the before, during and after of your next meeting. So let's take a look. Okay, so here we are looking at a MindMeister map. Now let's imagine this is the mind map agenda for our meeting. Now the first thing to note is that the uh, single mind map can be really sort of multi-purpose in its use. It can serve as the uh, planning for the meeting, the agenda for the meeting, the note-taking mechanism, and then also the action planning and follow-up for the meeting. So a single document that can serve all of those purposes is really going to save you a lot of time and effort and keep everyone on the same page much more easily. So let's imagine this is the agenda for our particular meeting. And first and foremost, I'm going to just come up here to a, a branch that we use a lot at Bigger Plate to help us plan through, uh, plan out our meetings. And that's just a branch called uh, POST. And that helps us to think in advance about the purpose, outcome, structure, and timing of our meeting. So this is really about that before stage where you think through what are we trying to get out of this uh, meeting? Why are we, are we meeting in the first place? What outcomes do we need to leave with? So here I've said the outcomes we're looking for is to flag issues and roadblocks with our projects and agree the next sprint actions. The structure I have determined for the meeting is uh, one, two, three uh, key projects. We're going to look at each in turn and you'll see that that then becomes the structure of our mind map, which essentially is giving us our agenda for the meeting. I've then also put in the timing of the meeting, just so again, if I was to share this, people know what they're in for. Now, this can be a really great way of planning your meeting because it forces you to think through whether these things are all aligned. So if you've got a 45 minute uh, meeting slot with some people or some person, to have 23 outcomes you're seeking may not be very realistic. So thinking through the combined purpose, outcome, structure and timing and making sure it all fits together in a way that makes sense is really going to help you to have a more effective meeting. So that's about the before part, but what you could also do in the before part is share this agenda mind map with your team. So using online tools like MindMeister, you can share in advance with people and ask them to populate key parts of the mind map in advance. So for example, I could share down here and add uh, certain team members to my uh, my map, invite them to it, and they would then be able to add their inputs into the map in advance of the meeting. A great way to pull the key information we want together in advance rather than hoping everybody brings the right things with them on the day. So if I've invited my team into the, uh, the map in advance, they've hopefully started to populate some of these key areas. Now in the first agenda item, we've just broken this down into three uh, sort of phases of the project that we want to cover. And again, we've just started to use some of the other functionality in mind mapping software uh, to start to identify kind of task based information. So in advance, I might have said, uh, Clayton, can you fill out this, this part of the map? Uh, Jacques, can you just give some information here? And what we could then have is, is both of these people and the team pulling key documents into the mind map. So here they've attached uh, just another document from the computer. And with MindMeister, that's really useful because it's pulling everything into one place. So when you have the meeting, you don't have to go jumping off, looking in files and folders, trying to find exactly uh, where that particular document is. You see it's embedded right in the mind map here. And that means when we're having our discussion, we can keep everybody focused on the item at hand not losing time jumping around looking for that scoping document or that statement of work. The team members can also tick off in advance and say, yes, we've done these things, just using really simple functionality within MindMeister to kind of mark up tasks and their, and their sort of progress. But what if in the meeting we then start to plan out the next stage of our progress? So this is where in the um, meeting you can actually use the tools to gather notes and feedback. So uh, somebody might say the beta changed it live, uh, live yesterday. Um, and then somebody says, well, that means it's ready for testing. So we can start to build out people's ideas and feedback live during the meeting and people can see their ideas taking shape in the mind map and being recorded. That's a great way of building better engagement in your meetings. Instead of everybody writing their own notes or looking at their own laptops, Hopefully what we've got is people all looking at the same screen or even looking at the same mind map on their laptops to just see their ideas fitted in with everybody else's and see how ideas connect up and feedback connects up. As we then get into action planning, for example, we can start to use some of that functionality. If we open up the menu up here to say, well, we need to start the beta testing. 
who are we going to assign that to? So I can just, for example, assign that to Graham. I can see how far completed that is. I can say to Graham in the meeting, this is our top priority, priority one. How soon can you do it? And he would then have the ability to say, uh, actually, July 1st is a bit too soon. Maybe let's just push that uh, a day later. And then from now on, this is the record that he will then update to show his progress on that beta testing. He may then start to put in uh, items into the map that need resolving. So maybe he puts in, these are the bugs he's finding. He's marked them up as priority one, two, and three. And the responsibility for actually fixing those bugs maybe belongs to someone else. So we can assign Jacques those tasks. We can again mark it as how far through completion and also give ourselves a due date. Maybe we've got a launch on the, 3rd of, uh, on the 4th of July uh, over the weekend. So we want to get the bugs resolved on the 3rd. So very quickly in your mind map, you can see how we can start to capture ideas and feedback. We can gather things in advance to help to keep our meeting on track. And we can then also use the same document to manage and monitor our progress. So when we do this same meeting two weeks later, we can check in and say, Jacques, how are we doing on these bugs? Graham, how are we doing on the beta testing? Ticking these things off as we go. Finally, of course, there's the follow-up and the, the sharing of this information with others after the meeting. As I say, if you're using online collaborative mind mapping tools like MindMeister on the screen now, you've got great options to share that mind map with other people. We can add them to view it using email, or we can also uh, invite them to edit it. So you've got different permissions to give people. But maybe not all members in your team or maybe your clients are not familiar with mind mapping great thing with tools like MindMeister is being able to export this format into something else. So for example, we can transfer this mind map into a PDF, into a Word document even, PowerPoint slides, or just a, a flat image so that people can get the output, the actions, the visual of what was discussed in the meeting, the actions and the ideas in whatever format you need in order to share it with them. So that's a really quick look at effective meeting management using MindMeister. For more MindMeister templates, tutorials, and training, please feel free to visit biggerplate.com. And for a discount on MindMeister software, take a look in the description and follow the link below this video.